Hey everybody, welcome back to how to build a 105 Thunder Chief. 10 minutes at a time. Morning everybody. Guess what? The airplane, the airplane ferry showed up last night and finished the 105. <laughs> Don't know which. <laughs> Them dang airplane ferries never show up in my house. But uh, there's a few people concerned about whether when I was going to pile on a bunch of Bondo there if that was still going to fit. And uh, I sanded a lot of that down, you know, when I did this batch of primer. And it, uh, it slid right in. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a snug fit now. I mean, not really snug. I mean, it just slid right in. And uh, so I'm not worried about a little extra primer. Plus, I want to do some sanding. You know, that's not really that thick. And the better that fits, I want a nice tight fit. It's tight now. It don't wobble, you know. It just, it just, it just slides right in. It's just perfect. On a little bit of primer, make it nice and snug. And that's how I want it. And uh, got the rudder fit on there. I have one of them already glassed, but uh, which made me a spare. <laughs> then we got the elevator. And uh, that's going to be perfect, Butch. One inch added back here is perfect. One inch added back here is perfect. And uh, I got one here's where the chute door goes. Pop up, parachute come out. Bam! That's gonna be cool. That sure does look good. Now, I wanna go over something here. We're going to use this is something I've been thinking about, a channel like this, okay? Now, of course, we're going to need a bigger one. I'm thinking about a, a quarter-inch aluminum spar. See, it comes out like this, and it's bent. Comes out, it's bent a little bit. It goes in at an angle, which we can't do because it won't slide in my pockets. It's going to have to be straight, which I don't think will hurt us. But we can put a bull, our bulkhead right there where the main spar goes. Put this, bolt this to the bulkhead, run our aluminum out here. And you know, it'll be like quarter inch wide, about yay, three inches tall, four inches, whatever the thickness of that wing is. But it kind of comes out here and tapers because it actually goes through the wheel well. It comes out and it tapers down and to where the strut. Goes with in between the, the gear and the tire, goes right through there. And I'm thinking we could just make some channels like this, bolt them on a bulkhead, and when we bolt them on that bulkhead, we just tweak them down to that one degree, and uh, we'll have our one degree dihedral in them wings. What's the thing about that sharp pencil? Uh, that way, you know, it'll be fairly accurate. And this, see, because actually I think this comes out level, then it drops down, but man, that won't be very noticeable. I'd rather have that in it than the non droop. I don't know. We still got a debate about that, but we can change it. We can fly it with the prototype even straight. We can put a, you know, we can even change it and see what the difference is. You know, we can do a lot of experimenting with this prototype, but we got to get it flying first. So maybe we should mount them straight. No, because we'll have to change the gear too, because it'll make the gear wrong. About one degree. Might make a, that big a difference in the gear. I don't know. I don't know. I got that on the fence, but I wanted to put it together, see what it looked like. Man, that thing's looking awesome. It's going to be a bad old jet. I cannot wait. Talked to our pencil this morning. He's got our elevator set up, made. 
and it's looking awesome man because it's got a rock see it rocks it don't just turn you know the pivots up here and then it comes down here and, and rocks and uh, it's got it set up on bearings elevator servos right there uh, looks awesome looks awesome I showed him see because the T T45 rocks too the elevator and I kind of showed him that setup they had on that how they made it rock and it's just real simple man the elevators right there or the servos right there next to it, it's about that far away and little arms you know a couple ball links and you know that's not going to fail rather than something big you know and uh set up on ball bearings it's looking awesome it's about got it done try to talk me into making a movie come on paul spit it out <laughs> oh okay all right let's get to some sand today quit loafing you gotta need to quit loafing so much get some sandpaper now <laughs> Get some done if you wasn't loafing all the time. You know when you build 10 minutes at a time, you gotta roll, man. Make things happen. Build a dang airplane, dang it. Now this is 400 grit. We don't want to go no slicker, you know, because we got to add primer if you make it too slick. Be adhesion problems with the primer. And, uh, you know, when you pull your mold apart, I think that's what makes that primer lift in some spots. You know. So we don't want to get it too slick. We just want to get it smooth again after that primer. Flat, I should say. You want to get it flat. I love priming this time of year, man. There ain't no bugs out. I can open my garage door at night. It's kind of cool. That's when I put up the best paint jobs, you know. But I'm just a primer and I ain't painting it. It'll happen. See, when you start getting parts like that over there, is when I start getting really motivated. You know, but when you're working on plugs for a long time, and uh, you don't have actually have a part there, you know, that's... That gets kind of discouraging sometimes, but when you actually got parts sitting here, man, and you're putting something together, every new part you make, you go stick it on there. That's what it's all about, man. And you know, when it comes to life and you turn on that radio, it's like Frankenstein. You know, I feel like I almost created a living being. Because <laughs> when that dude's flying, it is alive, man. You know what I mean? Look, come in for that photo walk pass at full throttle. Whew. Ain't nothing better. And we don't want to sand through nowhere. We just want to get her slicked up. We're done. Any kind of cosmetic work. Oh, guess what that is, people? There's the Bobo timer. We know what that means. This episode of Bob TV is coming to an end. But stay tuned. We'll hit you with some more Bob TV today when we put these panel lines on. Man, that looks good. Ooh, doggy. That looks good right there. So we'll see you back in the shop. Same Bob time.